Welcome everybody to our event today. We have Qigong for Healing. Uh, David with Qigong Awareness. Uh, welcome to the program today. We're going to be talking about healing from a multitude of levels. We're mostly going to focus on Qigong practice, meditation, breathing practices, etc., etc. So stay tuned. Here we go. So I first want to thank the Love, Peace, Amen Foundation for making this uh, possible for us today and uh, covering the expenses, the hotel and so on and so forth and helping us to bring these Qigong practices to you. Uh, if you have met me before, well, welcome to this moment. We're practicing yet again. Uh, if you want to change something in your life, you always have to make a new habit. It's that simple. You have to make a new habit of whatever it is that you're doing. Otherwise, your chance for success or your chances for success are limited. So when we practice something, try whatever it is that you try, whatever it is that you want to try. I recommend you try it, play with it, uh, see if you like it. If you like it, keep practicing it and eventually turn it into a habit because if you turn it into a habit, it becomes part of, check this out, it becomes part of who you are. Have you ever heard in any of the spiritual teachings or any of the spiritual context from any spiritual teacher or, or religion or pseudo-religion or whatever the case may be, people saying that whatever teachers saying, whatever you place behind I am. So if you say I am lost, well then you're lost. If you say I am a shame, then you start living your life as though you're unworthy and sort of like in shame. But if you can step back and you can start creating uh, positive affirmations, and not just affirmations, things that actually become part of who you are, and anytime we train habits, that starts becoming who we are. So I've been practicing Qigong for 40 years. It's become part of who I am. It's not just that I'm a master or I got a certificate or this or that or the other thing. I'm here to share a sincere practice with you that is my habit. And I'm out there doing it. There's a lot of things I could do. There's a lot of things everybody's doing to make money or whatever the thing is. I'm doing something that I'm passionate about and I bring it in moments like this for free and another moment over here it's free on YouTube and another moment over here it's a few bucks and over here it's more money for CEUs but guess what I'm I'm doing the practice and it's becoming part of my habit so if I go back and I don't want to go too much into the story because I want to get into some physical practices here pretty quickly but one of the things that I do with Qigong and one of the things that I talk about and I write about if you've ever read my book if you haven't I'll give you a little show of it later and you can check it out if you're interested but there's a mindset behind these practices uh, the culture in China is different many people maybe are dressed like this uh, 8 million people a day reportedly are going out and practicing Qigong in the park it's like a thing there and there's also uh, again there's a cultural understanding sometimes it's connected to religion sometimes it's not I want to bring it to you as a physical form of exercise uh, that has definitely changed my life and it, for me is very tied to meditation it's very tied to martial art and it's very tied to something that uh, I've learned related to traditional Chinese medicine, which is one of the things I'm considered an expert in, and that is the, this practice called medical Qigong. So Qigong, the exercise itself, is typically referred to as the skilled cultivation of universal life force, but what does that mean? The skilled cultivation of qi, what does that mean? In general, we could think of it as energy, okay? Energy that we get from the breath that we take good energy versus not good energy. That's a really simple concept that we can use for the practice. We can build upon that. Uh, we know in Western medicine and Western science and so on how important oxygen is and how important good breath is and so on. But in Asia, there's this also extra conversation, which is this idea that chi rides on the breath. Many scientists are starting to talk about this now and talking about the bioelectric sea that we live in and that when we're breathing oxygen, we're not just breathing oxygen or uh, what they call in China, they say chi and in India, they may say prana, but we're literally breathing in energy not just in the form of oxygen. 
And that comes into our body in different ways. One of the ways is through the nose, sometimes through the mouth, which is not the best uh, way to breathe, and through the mouth, we'll talk about that. Uh, but we wanna bring not only the oxygen into our blood, we wanna bring that new chi, that new energy into our blood. So we're gonna get into that. We'll go along and uh, talk about this a little bit as we go on. Without further ado, let's get into some practices. We could talk a little bit more as our uh, two hours here unfold. So get some space in your room, uh, make yourself comfortable. I'm gonna scoot this chair back and let's actually practice a little bit of qigong and then we could chat some more. So. you guys would like to come up and join me. So we're going to go ahead and start rubbing our hands together here. Qigong, this is one of the beautiful things about it, is that it is a physical practice. It's also a practice to work with your emotions. It's also a practice to work with your breath, work with your hands, work with your feet, use your whole mind body. Okay, very interesting healing effects can happen when we do these kinds of things. Rubbing hands together, just lightly, relaxed, but you're rubbing your hands together here. Healing power lives in the palm of your hands or the palms of your hands. Healing power lives literally in the palm of your hand. Good question would be, why is that so? It's because of the mind connected to those hands. Go ahead and shake your hands like this, like you have water. Here, this is a good one for the lymphatic system. It's also, these exercises start to make good warm-ups. So, this one sometimes we just call shaking water or shaking water off. The backs of the hands are gonna brush the pants. One, two, three, four, Five. We're going to come up here, we're going to shake hands like so, and we're going to brush. One, two, three, four, five. Really relax shoulders here. And one, two, three, four, and five. We're going to go into this exercise we call the gentle drum. Sometimes it's called knocking on the door of life. I'm basically just twisting and swinging my arms a little bit. I do want to try and swing from my waist, so I'm actually turning from the waist and then the arms are following. The hands are swinging here, and if it's comfortable to you, lightly tap on your low back area. This is uh, to help the kidneys, but it's also to help the bladder meridian that's there, some of these acupuncture meridians, uh, to open up and bring some healing and some chi flow to the body. So. Twisting, turning here a little bit. Um, you may notice I'm lifting my heel on this one. Some of you who uh, have issues in your knees and hips might like this variety and others of you might like to just stay flat footed like this. It's a little better for your body. So find which one works better for you, which one's more comfortable, etc. And then we're going here and twisting and turning. And as I was joking around, half serious, half kidding, uh, before coming on here to practice with you all. The moment we record this, <laughs> you're helping me to make history. It's kind of interesting how quickly history is made. And what do I mean by this? Well, it's pretty simple. Take a picture of yourself doing something with somebody and then go back and look at your camera. And you already made history. Years later, you may go back and look at what's on that camera and go, wow, you know, I remember that, etc. And that's how quickly the past goes by. Sometimes it seems like there's a saying about, the, about time where it says the days are long, but the years go by quickly. The days seem to be very long. And this is what uh, Mr. Einstein used to call relativity. It's all relative. How does that apply to what we're doing? Well, let's come into the moment. Let's find our breath, come into the body. And if somebody's gonna take a picture of us five minutes from now or a recording of us like they are now, let's make it good. Let's make it uh, worthy of uh, being recorded. Inhale, exhale. Typically with Qigong, 
Mm, there's variations slightly different than yoga, but we breathe in through the nose, we exhale a lot of times through the mouth, especially if there's movement happening while we're doing the exercise. If it was a still exercise, it might just simply be uh, inhale through the nose, exhale through the nose. But once we incorporate physical movement, it's typically a breath in through the nose, out through the mouth. All right, hopefully you're enjoying this, but stay with it and keep uh, practicing this one. And please don't forget this one uh, for yourself if you like it, if you desire to practice it, and you forget all the other exercises I teach you today. If you remember this one coupled with the one that I'm gonna show you next, there's a very nice uh, chi flow that you can create in your body and create some energy for yourself. No energy, it's very difficult to do all of the other things that you desire to do in your life, including heal your body. Inhale, exhale, this is opening up the spine, this is helping some of the uh, meridians to flow more freely, opening up your breath opening up the cranial sacral fluid, inhale, exhale, now we're going to do something that I like to do, this is one of the ways that I like to teach this particular exercise, so we're going to go from movement and then we're going to go to a second exercise called standing tree meditation, and I'll show you what that is in just a moment and how I recommend you practice this one and then we'll have another opportunity, at least one other opportunity to do it again so that you maybe understand better how it works. So you've been doing this for a little while, let's say, two minutes, three minutes, something. Could do this as many as 10 minutes. Could do it as many as 20 minutes, okay? That's a good start for most people, anywhere in there, five minutes to 20 minutes. All right, so you're doing this uh, gentle drum, you're twisting, you're turning. Now, let the feet come to the ground. Imagine you're plugging your tailbone into the ground. I need you to place your mind and your attention down to your feet. It's hard for some people, especially when there's things moving around inside your body, which is what's happening. So the first thing is, plug the tailbone into the ground by bending the knees, tucking the pelvis slightly forward. And now I'm gonna have you take your hands, place them to your side. I'm gonna have you open up your armpits a little bit like you're holding uh, an egg in there, in each armpit. And then you're making your legs work a little bit. I want you to have some tension there. There's a fine balance between too much tension and too little tension. Too little tension, you're falling over. Too much tension, you start contracting and you know your legs hurt. If that happens, just start walking your legs and we'll shake it out, okay? But stay like this for just a moment. It takes a little bit of discipline to do this practice. And you may notice, some of you may notice that uh, your saliva here is starting to change. Your mouth may be watering. You're getting some swallowing to the throat and so on. There's a whole Qigong science behind that. And there's some Western science. I'll share some details a little bit uh, in this course today. I talk a lot about those kinds of things in my programs. A little bit at a time is good. Find your breath. Exhale your breath. <sighs> Inhale through the nose and imagine you're breathing through your feet. Pull the energy up. Exhale down through the legs. <sighs> and then one more. <sighs> I can even make a little bit of an ah sound. In part, I'm doing that so you can hear me, but also it's a good sound to make for de-stressing. Inhale. Exhale. So it's kind of like an H A, an H A sound, like ha. And now we're going to march like this, okay? And when you're marching, some degree of uh, pounding on the floor. I say pounding, but it's like light pounding, okay? Clapping the floor. This opens up the chakra centers in the feet. You have many chakras in your feet, and this opens up those areas and uh, allows you to disperse what we call stagnant chi, stuck chi, um, so on. So, go like that, 
and now come out to a little bit wider than shoulder width, uh, whatever's comfortable for you. So you can go closer, the more, the more wide you go, the harder it is. We're gonna do an exercise here, we're gonna incorporate and then we're gonna go back and repeat, but we're gonna give you one more exercise here in this particular series. And this exercise is called the waterfall. I'm gonna take the backs of my hands. As I exhale, I'm gonna take the backs of my hands and go toward the floor. <sighs> I'm gonna pause with that exhale out. Then I'm gonna inhale through the nose. Exhale, mouth at the very end. It's important to keep it out for a second, the breath. Then inhale. And a really simple way of practicing this exercise, breathe in the good. The sunshine. <sighs> exhale, out the, exhale out the bad, put it in the ground. Come back up, inhale. Breathing in the good, exhale. <sighs> really try and open up that throat and drop the tongue so that this is coming all the way from the gut. <sighs> Sounds like that, as opposed to just my upper lungs. Ah, this is just my upper lungs, and then I feel almost a little dizzy because I'm not grounded. So, inhale, I want to come from the gut. I drop the tongue, I open the throat. Ah, breathe in the good. Ah, get out the bad. Now, from this position here, let's go back and just shake our hands. This is our warm up uh, here, with just a little reminder of at least a piece of that warm up. So we're here, and then one, two, three, four, five. Let's go right into the gentle drum again. And going through this a second time, you may notice, oh, that feels, I'm getting connected to that. I feel how that works. So from here, this opening back up, the spine, the low back, all the way coming up the spine. You have various acupuncture meridians that run throughout the body. And uh, they used to think, when I say they, I'm talking about sort of the West and the Western culture, used to think that this was basically like voodoo and that uh, when these bronze statues were discovered in Asia that had these points all over them. They just kind of thought it was like a, a voodoo thing, a religious kind of thing. And uh, in 1996, there were some French researchers who were able to actually map every single point related to the acupuncture meridians on the body. And they found that every single one of these points had a greater electrical charge, greater electrical charge. So you can also think of chi as electricity to some degree. It's not exactly electricity, and yet there is an element of that there. As I mentioned earlier, bioelectric fields. So there's an electrical aspect related to chi. It flows through the body. There are meridians that are connected to that. There are chakra centers that are connected to that. In 1996, they decided to make acupuncture complementary uh, as opposed to um, alternative medicine. They decided to make it complementary medicine because now they had science behind it to say, oh, okay, you know, this is actually like a thing. So there's a lot more for us to learn and discover about these practices and who we are. Some people consider the body a temple. Uh, I'm one of those people. And uh, our body temple is where we live. Yes, you may have a house. Maybe you have an apartment. You sleep in the bedroom of someone's house, whatever the case may be. Maybe you sleep on the couch. Maybe you sleep on the floor. Wherever you go, your body temple goes with you. Working with your body temple is the greatest way that I know to best manage your life, your inner life and your outer life. So sharing that with you a little bit here today. Keep breathing in through the nose, exhale through the mouth. Once again, 
give you the basic concept today of breathe in the good, exhale the bad. Breathe in the new, exhale the old. That's another way of thinking about that. Inhale, exhale. So a lot of people discuss breath and more and more of this is happening these days scientifically where different uh, people are discussing breathing and how breathing is related to oxygen and carbon dioxide and nitrous oxide and so on. But again, there is uh, an element of breath that is related to the bioelectricity that is literally in the energy field that you are practicing in. And that rides in on your breath and you bring in the new energy as you breathe in and you get rid of the bad chi, so to speak, the stagnant chi, as you exhale. Oh. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. At any time you feel dizzy, lightheaded, or something when you're practicing, you need a sip of water, please rest, sit down. Uh, Qigong is interesting. It's uh, different than aerobics. It's different than weightlifting. It's different than running. It's different than swimming. All things that I like to do. It's different than biking. It has a very particular quality to it, and it does cause a certain kind of detoxification when you're practicing it. So if you start feeling a little weird, you start feeling a little wonky, just sit down, take, take some sips of water, and uh, balance yourself out, and then come back to the practice. <sighs> Inhale, exhale. Remember now this one, we're going to let that unwind. Very important, you place your mind to your feet. Sink your weight, that's one way that will help you to do that. Bring some of that mind and energy down, that takes some practice, but um, there's a first run at it. Uh, from this position here, I'm going to open up my armpits a little bit. We have different variations of this one, but this is one I'm going to have you work with. So also help you uh, be grounded as well. So you're holding some degree of a frame. But you're really trying to relax your shoulders. So if initially you're, you do this and you're like, oh, oh, right away you get neck pain or shoulder pain, you can roll your shoulders and try and suggest to them to loosen up so you can roll them like this. And this is not just a movement of the shoulder. I'm also pulling with the elbow. So the elbow is raising here. Okay, So this is a good exercise in and of itself. You can roll the shoulders. Once you start to get more comfortable with this, there's a very interesting phenomenon that starts to happen. It's as if my arms just are hovering here now. That took me some time to experience, probably takes some of you a little bit of time to experience, but what's interesting about it is rather than just feeling like a body, physical body, I literally feel like a field of energy. It's a, best way I can describe it to you. And this particular posture has helped me to find that over the years. There are others, but this is definitely one of them. So when you're standing here, you can also visualize yourself standing in an auric field, like a golden arc of light, like an egg, sort of like an egg shape or something, or a circular shape all around your body. Inhale, exhale, inhale through the nose. As you inhale, imagine you're pulling the energy up through your feet, up into your legs, up into your lower belly. And then exhale. Once again, in with the good when you're ready. Out with the bad. And when you're ready, in with the good. Imagine you're breathing through your feet. Exhale. Now, we're going to take the backs of the hands. This is going to help us get further grounded. Backs of the hands go toward the ground. I do not want to be bent over like this. I want to just be coming down straight like this, whatever is comfortable. I'm going to inhale slow through the nose here. 
Right here, imagine water in a waterfall coming down. Exhale, exhale, exhale. The water washing away whatever poisons, toxins are there. Come back up when you're ready. Inhale. We're going to go here, H A sound. So it's just ha. Ah. At the bottom, imagine pushing that out and into the ground. Ha. Ah. In with the good. Ah. Out with the bad. In with the good. Ah, out with the bad. You may notice that as you're inhaling, ah, as you're inhaling here, you may notice your inhales are getting bigger, and you may notice your exhale ah, going longer because you're creating space in your system. Ah. 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 And let's march those feet up and down, light pounding on the ground, okay? Where do we see marching? And you can also move your arms. We see marching typically uh, in a marching band, perhaps, but we also see it with military, okay? And there's a reason why do soldiers march? Who knows, I mean, but one of the reasons that they march, who knows who came up with it first, but I've seen some armies uh, from different Asian countries that know, very, that know martial art at a very high level, very high level. Uh, superhuman feats these uh, folks are performing. Anyway, uh, when it comes to acupuncture and it comes to meridians and it comes to qigong, at the bottom of your feet, it's closer to the front, what we'd call the ball of the foot, there is an acupuncture point there called kidney one. It is related to the kidney meridians. Kidneys in the body in oriental medicine are related to your first source of energy. And it's related to a tank down here called the lower dantian. It's like a battery right here. And so when we're marching, we're ongoingly pounding on that to some degree, pounding on that acupuncture point. Those kidney meridians run up the insides of the legs. They come up here along the front sides of the body out to the outside of the, um, uh, the navel center. And uh, they feed the kidneys amongst other things. And kidneys are related to energy, okay? Vitality, fertility, these kinds of things. So, very good meridians to activate. We also have many chakras there down in the bottom of the feet. So as you're doing this, guess what this does? And we're gonna go bring our legs out for a moment, just for a moment. We're gonna go to standing tree meditation here like I showed you. Um, feet can be wider or just under the shoulders. Place your mind to your feet. Be heavy there, be heavy there, be heavy there. If you need to do that, just do, like, be heavy there. Because there's two very important principles before I come back to the kidney thing. There's two very important principles. One is gathering energy, but the other one is staying grounded. If you gather energy and bioelectricity and you start getting charged up, but you're not grounded, it makes you very wonky. So you want to make sure you're coming back to your feet and you're grounding and you're staying centered there. So let's walk that off. Take a deep breath, inhale, exhale, and I want everybody to pause for a moment and I want you to go get a little sip of water. I'm gonna do the same. I wanna give you just a little bit of a minute, like a minute break just to get some water. I'm gonna come right back. We're gonna talk about the kidneys and we're actually gonna go into another round of this, but please get a sip of water first because some of you may not be used to this, okay? <clears throat> So 
and join me when you're ready, but Qigong practice, when you're doing this type of practice and like this routine that we're doing, there's a purgation effect. You're purging, you're cleansing, you're detoxing. That's part of the idea. Have you ever seen a sponge that's filled with grease or something? You squeeze it and it's very difficult to get grease out of there. If you get grease on your hands and you go to try and wash the grease off, does it come off easy? No, it typically does not. So when you think of healing and you think of Qigong practice, you can think of Qigong as being a practice of washing but a lot of times, the grease in your organs, in your tissues, in those meridians, in your lymphatic system, in your bloodstream, it's stuck. It's, it's, so you have to actually drag it. You have to move through it. There are different styles of Qigong where people will move. You hardly ever hear them breathe. It's very slow. You'll see me do that as we get towards some of the meditation practices. But I like these kinds of practices for uh, getting you charged up, giving you energy, um, purging and detoxing, and making space, which is what we're doing. We're going to do it again one more time. And then that will put us in a sweet spot to actually enter into a little bit of still meditation. And we'll get into that, but I'm going to say briefly that with still meditation, one of the challenges for people is actually staying awake. Why? They don't have enough energy. So they go to go do still, still meditation, and guess what happens? They fall asleep. Well, that's sleep. That's not meditation. So I teach in such a way where I get you energized. I help you detox some things. That, and, you're, and again, you have that energy. Now we go to a stillness practice. Now we go to a meditation practice because we're awake. We've gotten rid of some of the poisons, the toxicities, the emotional stress. We can think more clearly if we enter into meditation from that place, you can find way quicker uh, avenues into deeper states of meditation. So with that in mind, let's go back into this one more time, this routine here that I just showed you. So we're going into, I'm just skipping the warm up that we did with shaking uh, off water. Later, you can add, add that back in if you desire. Um, we don't necessarily need it right now because we're going into the third round of this. So I'm going to go right into this gentle drum here, which is our primary, um, primary warm-up practice. This is like the first one was a nice little warm-up, and then this one is the bigger warm-up, if you will. Inhale, exhale. Now, I told you there's two principles that are very important uh, to me, and I think a lot of people who train Qigong, uh, and that is this idea of gathering energy and this idea of grounding. Mm, I find over the years that a lot of people who focus on energetic arts, meditation, yogic practices, various forms of Qigong and so on, there's not as much emphasis on the grounding, which is very important uh, because, again, you can gather all this energy, but if you're not grounded, it's actually going to become troublesome. Depending on uh, who you train Tai Chi with, if you're training Tai Chi, Tai Chi typically does emphasize a little more grounding because Tai Chi is actually a martial arts practice. It's actually a martial art. And so a lot of people have lost the martial art application of that martial art, but it is a martial art. It is also the most popular form of Qigong. So check this out. The most popular form of Qigong is a martial art, slowed way down. But this practice of Tai Chi, because there's uh, using of the legs and certain postures related to martial art, People tend to emphasize the grounding. Um, we do that here in our Qigong practice in some ways. For example, when we go to horse stance, you'll see this very often in the Kung Fu arts, the uh, karate arts, etc. Horse stance is a very important stance for a lot of reasons. One of them is to help you get grounded and stay anchored. But it's not just the stance, it's what you do with your mind and your breath. So. Let's keep working with this. So right here, we're freeing up some energy. It's one way to think about this particular exercise. We're freeing up some energy. 
It is said in traditional Chinese medicine that if the energy is flowing, if the energy is freely, freely flowing, then we have health, we have vitality, we even have prosperity. Well, when the energy becomes stagnant somewhere in the body, well, the body is a metaphor, it's a symbol, it's intimately connected to the rest of your life. There's no such thing as, I have a problem in my foot, and the problem in my foot has nothing to do with everything else going on in my life. I will tell you, as somebody who's been doing healing work and healing myself and so on for the last 40 years, 55 years old now, but I started all of this when I was 15 um, from a place of uh, deeper practice. And I've come to realize there's no such thing. I have a problem in my shoulder and it has nothing to do with what's going on in my life. I broke my finger and it has nothing to do with what's going on in my life. Uh, the doctors told me I have supercalifragilisticexpialidocious and it has nothing to do with what's going on in my life. It has everything to do with what's going on in your life. And if you put some attention on it and you learn to find ways to heal it and work with it, Qigong is a way to work with it. Meditation is a way to work with it. Traditional Chinese medicine is a way to work with it. All of this, okay? Your breath, it's a way to work with it. If you find a way to work with it, you will find a way to work through it. And if you work through it, nine times out of 10, or at least say, let's say eight times out of 10, you're gonna have a lot less complications if you heal it yourself. You're gonna spend a lot less money, but it's over time, you're gonna spend a lot less money. But it probably will take you more time. It'll take you more time to heal it yourself than it will to go in and have a surgery and have them cut it out, okay? Um, sometimes you need to do that. But if you have the option, uh, doing this type of work can help you work through things. I'll share some of my other stories later about how I've done things like that, other people have done things like that. But it just gives you an idea. As simple as this is, as silly as this may be, there are people in China right now practicing this exercise, and some of them might be practicing it for four hours, like four hours a day, this is what they do. But you know what? Four years ago, they were diagnosed with terminal cancer and given four weeks to live. And four years later, they're still practicing this type of practice in uh, the park. And if you want to see an interesting movie on that, it has some elements of that in it. Uh, there's, an, there's a movie that came out, it's like an independent film, and it was called Farewell. And you'll see some Qigong, you'll see some practicing in the park, and you'll see somebody who uh, got the diagnosis and you'll see somebody who, and yet the Qigong is not the main theme of the story, so it's just kind of interesting. I happened to come across it. Uh, my wife and daughter took me to it and I thought it was very interesting that it had Qigong in it. So we're opening this up, opening up the meridians, inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth. Mm. Could you do this while listening to music? Yes. Could you set a timer while you're doing this? Yes. Inhale, exhale. Such an easy exercise, but so good for you. Then, boom, the feet. Sink the weight. Tuck the pelvis slightly forward so your butt is not sticking out. I also don't want to push my pelvis too far forward. But I want to imagine plugging that tailbone down into the ground just a little bit, just enough so that I could feel like, okay, I'm getting grounded right there. And then from here, the arms elevate a little bit and they open up. And I'm creating this more of like a rounded kind of uh, look to myself and my posture. And this is related on the level that it is. It can help you get in touch with literally yourself as an energy field. Mm may not happen today. Took me some time to discover that. But that's what it's like now. Once I put myself in this position, it's just a very interesting phenomenon. I actually have to work to set my arms down. I actually have to work to come out of this posture. When you first start doing this practice, it's like you have to work to get into this posture and then keep it past, you know, 10 seconds. But then later it's like you get into the posture and it's like hard to come out of it. Staying here. 
In fact, if you see the last program that we just filmed uh, here a couple of weeks ago, um, I had Keith doing, Keith over here to my right, doing a demonstration and I was doing some healing work on him and he was standing in this posture. And when, the, when it was over, I said, Keith, go ahead and take three deep breaths. Go ahead and come out of that as you desire. And if you go watch that, you'll notice he didn't come right out of it. He had to like sit there for two, three minutes and go, okay, I'm coming out now. And then 10 seconds, 20, okay, I'm coming out now. I'll be back anytime. And then realizing, wow, it's like I'm like in a zone somehow and it's hard for me to just go back to normal. So inhale now, exhale. Imagine inhaling through your feet. Exhale through your feet. Inhale the good through your feet. Exhale the bad through your feet. And let's just march like that for a moment. Stay grounded with some of that stuff that's getting churned up, okay? And then here, exhale. Pause with that exhale out, then inhale. The pause here at the end. Ah, very important for a couple reasons. First of all, ah, get rid of that bad, put it in the ground, get grounded. That's number one. Number two, ah, hold the breath out right there, then inhale. That pause. Ah, is gonna help you on a multitude of levels. Uh, for now, let's just leave it at that. As far as the intellectual. Uh, 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 inhale the good. Exhale the bad. Now, bring the feet a little closer together. Let's uh, march them just for another moment here. Pal kind of pounding the feet on the ground a little bit, moving the arms like this, okay? Another really uh, couple things I want to show you here. One is I just realized there's another one I want to show you right here in the middle of this, so a little detail. So we are walking like this and marching like this to um, ground and to build up our energy. I related this back to some soldiers and why they do this. I talked about the kidneys. A word that I did not uh, point out, but I'm going to point out now, this is a practice to eliminate fatigue. That's why so soldiers march this way. If they just walked, they run out of energy. If they march, and what is one of the things about marching? I already told you, kidney meridian and so on. But what's the other thing about marching? It takes a certain kind of mindfulness to keep going boom, 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 boom. It takes a certain kind of mindfulness. Anytime you're mindful about your movement, it's going to give you more energy. So this is an important uh, idea here with this one. What I also like to do with this practice, remember how in the beginning we did this gentle drum, we were swinging, 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 then we stopped and we came to standing tree meditation, right? We can do a similar thing with this exercise. So we're pounding like this, quote again, light pounding, and don't hurt yourself, <laughs> okay? So it just means, it's like an attitude, so rather than just light touch, light touch, no, I'm a little bit of a pounding, okay? And so when I'm doing this, this uh, calf muscle in the back, both calf muscles, are pumping blood back to the heart, okay? So you're getting blood moving. This is really good for your circulation. That's why running in place and walk, you know, all of this is good for you. But we're going to do something else with it as well. So we're pounding, pounding, pounding. Now bring the feet out. Go right to your standing tree meditation. Make sure, bring your mind and your energy down. You need to plug in because from doing what you're doing, that energy is going to actually want to rise up and come up. You need to stay grounded right here, okay? Exhale your breath through your mouth. Stay grounded there. Now, don't worry about big breath. Just take your hands like this. 
We're going to bring them up to the shoulder line and we're going to press. Slow motion, slow, slow, leaving the breath alone, leaving the breath alone, let the breath alone. Slow, just working with the chi, working with the posture, bringing the hands up. Doesn't mean you're not breathing, it just means you're not doing one breath in and one breath out, which would be similar to what we were doing. You're just moving the hands slow about this speed, letting the breath do what the breath is doing. Now let's inhale here. Now, bring your hands, light tap here on the legs, light tap on the side of the legs, light tap coming down the fronts of the legs. Be careful here. And go down and come up the inside, go down the outside, two hands, same time, inside, and tap here to the lower back, and to the sides, and down, and up, and down. Now let's come up here, I got some tapping on the shoulder, you can use this other arm to get a little further up there to tap on the shoulder. Let's come down the arm, I'm going to come up the inside here, across this pericardium meridian, lung meridian here, go right across the top, careful on the microphone David, and come back up the inside and down one more time, low back you can, kind of just here, just bending over slightly forward to be able to get right there. Ah, nice. Again, need to sit down, need a sip of water, go ahead. We're almost done with this round, but now bring your hands, um, middle fingers, touch them together, bring them to the lower rim of your navel center. Feet approximately shoulder width apart, knees slightly bent. This in and of itself right here is a stillness practice, meditation practice. I'll just show it to you briefly. We'll talk about it. We'll uh, come back and do a little practice with it after we have a little break, a little conversation and uh, some water, but let's just look at it briefly so that you can build upon just a little bit the momentum of what we just did and then this is like your cherry on top you place this here and we're just going to do this for a minute I want you to notice is your temperature changing at all is your saliva changing at all you feeling shaky inside at all what's going on for you as you hold this position Let your hands come down to your side with a, an inhale, um, unless for any reason you start to feel dizzy. If you do, then don't complete the movement. But with an inhale, we're going to raise our hands to the ceiling. Just we're going to inhale. We're going to exhale. And then just march a couple of times. Very good. And go ahead and get your water and I'll meet you back here with a chair and we'll converse a little bit.
All right, great job. So, assuming you're still with me and practicing, all right, great job. So, this is a nice little routine to get some energy moving, uh, you know, relatively short routine, depending on how long you practice each movement. Uh, it does not have to be done, you know, this many minutes, that many minutes, but for a beginner, uh, like for example, we have a, a beginner's class where we do like a 21 day Qigong challenge, but in that challenge, it's Qigong, we're not running marathons. So it's literally like, we start with 10 minutes a day. So if you're anywhere in the three minutes, the five minutes to 10 minutes, like good for you. And there's days where, you know, I don't get to practice Qigong for 40 minutes or even 20 minutes. Well, most of the time I usually get to get, get that much in, but every once in a while, maybe I'm traveling or something and I'm on the plane to go teach a seminar or whatever, whatever the thing is. And I will squeeze in, in the airport some amount of time. So, uh, if I only have five minutes, I have 10 minutes. Well, I can just take a couple of those practices and start doing them. The more that you do these practices, and what I like to do, of course, is create routines. I have various routines that work well and some routines that go back to the 1600s and other routines where after practicing for many years, there's a lot of practices that for me, I see come together really well. And I think give people a shortcut to experiencing certain things, coming back to that idea of tipping point that people are looking for when they're trying to heal their body, heal themselves, etc. So uh, practices like gentle drum, or knock, they're sometimes called knocking on the door of life, when we're doing this swinging, we're doing this movement, we're going movement, 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 and then when boom, you go to stillness and you're practicing being still, you get the rush of the movement practice and then you get the rush of all of a sudden becoming still because you have all of this blood and all of this chi in your body moving and now you stop, you pause and when you get good at that, because I need to emphasize, when you do it 10 times, when you do it 50 times, when you do it for the 75th time, that combination becomes significantly more potent going from movement, boom, I'm still. Why? Because when you do it for the very first time or 10th time or something, I guarantee you the part of the practice that you're not that great at is the stillness part of the practice. You're going to do just fine with the movement, but the stillness part you go to be still, your mind's moving over here, you, you think you're maybe grounded, you're not really sure, the mind is doing different things. It takes time to uh, connect mind, body, spirit. We say that a lot. Connect the mind, connect the body, connect the spirit, the holistic idea. But to actually do it in and with your body is something else. For me, because of how I healed myself and how I did things and so on, I still, here I am at almost 55, just around the corner here, very soon. Um, at 55, I'm still doing the physical practices. And one of my teachings to people and one of the things I say to myself and have said for years, move it or lose it. You're either going to move it or you're going to lose it. And Running is fantastic. I love running, but running has definitely uh, caused me some, some damage over the years. I still run. I just have to, I can't run like I used to. Um, uh, certain things, uh, certain forms of martial art that, you know, I'm not interested in practicing anymore because I don't want people punching me in the head and I don't like pe punching people in the head. So, so I don't do that anymore. So, Having things that you can do where you move and you breathe and like you don't even have to leave your living room, that's one reason and that's an awesome reason to do it. It is a form of exercise. But then there's also this mystery behind uh, Qigong, I, as I've been sharing with you. It's difficult to get in touch with your bioelectric field, although some can. 
he wouldn't probably voice it this way, but if you look at David Goggins, the Navy SEAL who runs 200 miles, I guarantee you he's getting in touch with his bioelectric field. He probably just doesn't talk about it, but he's in the zone. You'd have to be in the zone in order to run 150 miles or 200 miles. Anyway, with Qigong, you don't have to hurt yourself. You don't have to damage yourself. You don't have to go to extremes but you can begin to work with the physical body, moving it, having some discipline to move it. I said earlier, just a little while ago, that anytime you do anything with mindfulness, mindfully moving, we did with gentle drum, mindfully attempting, at least initially, attempting to be still and manage that stillness over a short period of time. And then going from that stillness and saying, okay, let's, for example, let's uh, march that out now. And I told you that when we march, we're no longer just walking. We're walking with a rhythm, we're walking with a beat, we're walking with mindfulness, which is this called this marching thing. And I said, and I'm repeating, any time that you do a practice with mindfulness, and awareness and movement of physical body with breath, you end up with something extra, what, ap what appears in comparison to the average, extraordinary. Why is it extraordinary? Why is it extra extraordinary? Because the baseball player who develops the awareness of whole body with breath and connects the bat to the ball at the exact moment with the perfect timing, which takes a lot of mindfulness and practice. And I'm going to tell you, it's not much different than Qigong. And some of you, I say it all the time, I've coached some pretty high-level golfers. Um, I don't know anything about golf, except I understand the principle of Qigong and I understand martial art very well. Martial art is the same. And I told you earlier, Tai Chi is a form of martial art. Qigong, therefore, is like sisters or cousins, however you want to think about it, with martial art. People do extraordinary things with martial art. I have a master who will break river rock at a speed of 104 miles an hour with his hand, like this, and then walk away with no injured hand. I, I tried to do it, by the way. I broke my hand in three places. And he, he laughed at me. So I was a little younger and, uh, you know, not quite as wise as I am now. But luckily, I used the Qigong to help heal my hand. How? Let's use that as an example for people to also further understand. So let's make the concepts clear. Number one, we move with gentle drum. Why? Mindful movement. Then we stop, we pause, we practice standing tree meditation. There's a lot more secrets as to why this works, but let's just look at the general basics. To practice what? Conscious and deliberate stillness. Who's doing that? You are. So the baseball player makes the movement slow, slow, slow till they can connect with it. The Tai Chi practitioner moves, the Qigong practitioner moves mindful movement, mindful stillness, deliberate, conscious, it starts changing things in your body. So when I broke that hand, some of you know that I was run over by a trailer when I was 12 years old. The, the anniversary was just recently. Halloween was just like, what, a couple weeks ago? And um, got run over. It grabbed the right side of my leg, ran up over the whole right side of my back. I blacked out. The kids came over and said, he's dead, he's dead. Um, I came to, and within a couple of years, I started developing severe scoliosis. It was unbelievable that I didn't break anything, but I had abrasions and scrapes and everything, bruises and all that. Uh, but within two years, I was in so much pain. All the sports I was playing, I, I just started quitting everything. I quit travel team soccer, and then I was like, I'll try football, I'll try wrestling. Um, had to quit those not long, that, not long after that. Uh, but I got introduced to martial art. I got introduced to traditional Chinese medicine. I got introduced to these alternative practices, which eventually there very quickly started leading me to Qigong, medical Qigong. And uh, it just seemed different. It wasn't a sport anymore. This was like a way of life. And it seemed to hold some kind of hope that I might be able to heal myself. 
Um, so I started experimenting with these things from different angles and practicing them. So let's say, for example, let's uh, bring it back to, for example, a broken hand or something that you have injured in your own body. Could be the shoulder, could be your foot, could be anything, right? Let's just do this a minute because we're seated here and let's take the concept and run with it. I'll throw it in here briefly and then we'll uh, go to a little bit more conversation about the stillness and the meditation. But for a moment, let's talk about you have something going on. Some of you probably at home, you might have arthritis in your hands. You might have arthritis in your wrists. Something's going on. Or maybe at home, you don't want arthritis in your hands or your wrists, all right? And you work on the computer a lot. Well, check this out. Everybody take a, a hand, one hand, doesn't matter which one, but then hold your hand up like this, okay? From this position right here, I'm seated, obviously. I could be like working at my computer. But I want to bring some healing to my hand. I want to bring some healing to my wrist. Anytime you bring healing to your hand, your wrist, your little finger, you're bringing healing to the entirety of your body. You may not know that or you may not know that yet, but you are. So right here, movement, the movement comes down. A lot of people, they just use their hand up and down. And they also use their hand to maybe get a drink. And that's all they do. They, they, don't, they don't move their hand much different than that. But in Qigong and in martial art and Tai Chi and so on, we don't just have this up and down. So go ahead and mindfully move it up and down. Mindfully turn it over like you're serving tea, like there's a teacup on your hand. Then turn it back over. And imagine like you're pushing it down toward the ground. And now raise it up, have the wrist bent. Sometimes like in Kung Fu, they call this like the snake or something. But so from here, this hand, and then turn it over to offer T, and then push it down, and then come up, the wrist is bent. Roll the hand over, roll the hand over. I'm gonna just put a little bit of this together. We're gonna roll, and just try and match what I'm doing. Roll, press, I turn over down here, my teacup is here, I come back up, I turn over, I come down, I turn up, like I have a teacup, I come up, I turn over, and I come down. Now, if I go a little bit, like, like I'm drawing, almost like it's like a figure eight-like motion, I can start to move my arm, and my arm's coming into play with this. There's my breath. Up, down. Up. Inhale, up. Exhale, down, inhale, up, that's mindful movement. Isolated, maybe I'm sitting at my computer, let's do it with the other hand, we have this hand. I'm gonna turn it over to bring the T. Now if my hand was hurting like it was when it was broken, uh, it's very, it's like, ow, 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 right, when you're doing it. But here's the thing, most people will stop moving it and then it just starts hurting more so move slowly, but move through it, and then start using not just the movement, but also your breath. So let's look at this down motion push. This is inhale up. Let the breath out. Now turn it over, bring up the teacup. Turn it over, press down, roll the hand. Turn the thumb inward, down, over, down, over, down, over. Now let's try two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, Three, four, turn it up, down, sideways, because it kind of comes up, it goes sideways. We can make it a little bigger, see? Bigger, down. <sighs> Exhales here. <sighs> if we do a basic understanding of breath, lift up and inhale. Push down and exhale. <sighs> Inhale. 
any time we tend to extend away from the body, like hitting with a baseball bat, or swinging with a golf club, or punching with our fist, that's an exhalation. If you're going to try and move your refrigerator, don't hurt your back, but if you're going to try and move your refrigerator, don't inhale and go, it's going to go nowhere. You have to, if you're at the gym and you're doing a bench press, you can't inhale and try and lift something heavy. I don't recommend trying that. You have to exhale. So well, here is the gathering. So if we go here, this is the gathering. Inhale. This is the exhale as we push away and down. That's like where the force is. We're exerting force this direction. This technique gets slightly more complicated, but play with it. So when we're coming up, okay, all of that is the inhale. So when we're here, we're, that's all inhale. This is the exhale. This inhale, that's all inhale until it turns to a push. This is a pull. All inhale, push, exhale, inhale. So you can also see, now start like this. You can also see that Qigong could be practiced in a chair, right? We could also practice this standing, but it also shows you, you could practice Qigong in a chair. You could practice Qigong while you're at the computer. Your hands are aching, maybe they bother you. You don't have enough energy in your body or you have anxiety. You're stressed or you have depression. That is called in Qigong and practice and so on, that's called stuck energy. One way to get energy unstuck is to start focusing your concentration on something that seems like a simple task, such as index finger to thumb, thumb to middle finger, thumb to ring finger, thumb to pinky, thumb back to ring finger, thumb to middle finger, thumb to index finger. So here we have some tapping, these two. Then we have some tapping these two. Then we have some tapping the ring finger to the thumb. Then we have some tapping of the pinky to the thumb. Then we move our way backwards, ring finger. Then we go middle finger. And then we go uh, index finger. And then we go to the other hand, index finger and thumb, middle finger, ring finger, uh, pinky, okay? Back to ring finger, back to middle finger, back to the other finger, okay? Now back to tiger claws. A lot of times we call this tiger claw. You want to uh, make the palm like tight, and it's like you're squeezing a ball in the air, okay? We could do this standing as well, but I'm just showing this to you here, a little time out from standing. Squeezing, you can bring, hold with a little bit of a grip, bring this to you with an inhale, push away from you with your palms, like you're pushing apart two walls there, you can inhale. And then here, now some of you right away might go like, whoa, I'd like, yeah, exactly. Imagine if you did that every day, it makes you stronger. Now let's look at that one position. I'll give you one more little piece of this, just a couple ideas here of things to play with. And you, can, you may be able to see, may be able to experience, I hope you are. That when we bring a little bit of mindfulness and we make specific movements, what does it require that happens? You actually have to show up to the moment. And you actually have to focus because if you don't, there's no way you're going to be able to do the technique. That's what I love about it. And what I love about that is that I don't have to think about those other things that I'm worried about in my life. Because there's a very interesting thing. Um, when it comes to martial arts, when it comes to Qigong, uh, yoga as well, certainly to some degree, it's different though. Um, there, so I'll stick with uh, martial arts and Qigong, which are my forte and my expertise. Um, when you do these types of practices, and by the way, Zen archery would be another example. Uh, you know, an archer with a bow and arrow, okay? Um, this would be another example of these kinds of practices. 
It requires that you exercise your ability to focus. That's called training your focus. And when you get better at training your focus, like Bruce Lee, for example, was a master of focusing his energy, his chi, and so on. His mind as well, because in order to focus the chi, the energy, you have to master your mind. One of the things Bruce Lee used to like to do is he would have a headphone over here, and in this headphone, he would have the sound of dripping water. And in this headphone over here, he would have the sound of busy traffic, the city and everything. And he would try and focus on that dripping water to the point where the only thing he could hear is that dripping water. That's what we're doing when we're practicing these Qigong practices. We're trying to tune out the noise, the stress, the anxiety, the fear, the pressure, whatever we're watching or did watch yesterday on the news or whatever the case may be. And we're looking to get so focused that we can just, we can come to our body. There's a teaching, and in the Buddhist practice, the traditional Buddhist practice, um, and by the way, I'm, I'm nothing in particular, but just give you a rough idea of where some of these relationships come in. In the typical Buddhist practice of meditation and so on, there is a practice of passivity. There's a practice of, traditionally, there's a practice, you know, the Buddha, the idea is he sat by a Bodhi tree, he became enlightened, he became illuminated by sitting there and doing nothing. That's how it was interpreted. He did nothing and then he became enlightened. And uh, sounds like an easy practice, but just go sit there every day for like 12, 14 hours a day and do nothing and you find out doing nothing is extremely painful. It's more painful than going for a run. Uh, I know because I've done it. It's, it's very painful. Anyway, so there's another phenomena going on there, but um, I won't get into all the details about that But for now. But understand that from a Buddhist practice, that's their way of doing it traditionally. And um, they used to refer to the body as a big skin bag back again uh, post the Buddha and kind of how it got carried to the Shaolin temple. They referred to the body as a big skin bag. It was like, oh, we don't need to do anything, just sit. Doesn't matter what we eat, doesn't matter what we train, doesn't matter what we do. Um, some say along came an entity known, uh, named as Bodhidharma who uh, followed some of the Buddhist teachings and so on, trained in India and Tibet and so on, came over and uh, retreated to the Shaolin temple and some people say he's the father of bringing uh, some of the harder, more physical practices into the game. And one of the reasons, the reasons that he did that, the story is, is that he came to the temple and wasn't necessarily well received and took off for nine years to meditate in a cave nearby, came out with some of these practices that were much more physical. Zen Buddhism then became a uh, more of a thing there at the temple and practices started becoming more and more physical so now you literally have monks that can like take their foot put it up behind their head stand on one leg squat down do all these different kinds of amazing feats breaking concrete blocks on their bellies and so on this is all related to qigong and to many schools those qigong practices are referred to as hard qigong we're not doing any of that here today but understand that if people can do that with their mind through the art of focus upon the body with breath and mindfulness what can't you do can you heal your liver if they can do that you can heal your liver. If I can heal my spine of a severe spinal condition that the doctors say you're going to be crippled by the time you're 30 and I literally practice for 10 years and then at 25 years old I have so much chi and energy coursing through my body that I'm having nothing less than what could be called metaphysical experiences, enlightening experiences, awakening experiences, and that they leave me with a healed spine, they leave me with greater uh, clarity and um, uh, abilities of high sense perception and uh, took me to another level with uh, doing healing work on people and so on. What can't you do? But in order to do this, we, we'll start bare, bare basics. One more time. We start here. It's a practice of mindfulness. This will heal your hands. This will heal your wrists. This will heal the, heal the things that you have going on in your fingers. And if one of those fingers doesn't work as well as the other, well, guess what? Stay there. Get that to activate, get that to work for you. Move it or lose it, okay? This is how one way of thinking about that. So, very powerful when we can bring together mind, body, breath. Excellent, relax, let's 
throw that off. Get a little sip of water. We're going to stand back up. We're going to do a, a little bit of a meditation practice. You need to run to the restroom, whatever you need to do, feel free and uh, come back and join us when you're ready. Okay, so I'm going to get a sip of water and I'll meet you right back here. And we're going to do this one standing unless for any reason you feel uncomfortable and don't feel like, you know, uh, your balance is good or something, then you can do it seated. Okay. So one of you guys are ready, come join me over here. All right, so standing tree meditation, which is sometimes called standing tree meditation, you'll see a slight variation of standing tree meditation called standing wuji posture, so on. Very, very um, common practice within Taoist practices and so on of uh, meditation. And there are many benefits to the standing practice versus seated practice. We have a lot of seated practices as well. I'm just going to turn you on to one particular practice today related to meditation from a standing position. Now place your feet about shoulder width apart and I'm going to pull some things together here, remind you of some things. Kidney meridians live at the bottom of the feet there, okay, the, the uh, kidney one. Okay, acupuncture point, if you put your two fingers just like this for a moment, just imagine your finger is up there just underneath the ball of your foot and right in there underneath your feet, that's kidney one, you can look it up later. From there, the kidney meridians run up the body, they start feeding the body with life force and energy. Having bare feet on the ground is best, walking outside, but sometimes that's not good and sometimes you need maybe more support so you can wear your shoes. But anyway, the point is here is that your feet start gathering the energy. Now some of you, when you stand here with knees slightly bent, okay, make sure to always have the knees slightly bent. It's a little harder on your legs seemingly, but if your legs are straight, you're going to get dizzy and lightheaded because the blood circulation is getting cut off, okay? So let's just uh, do this. This is, uh, in some schools, this would be called cheating, you know? They'd say, oh, just like some teachers I had in some schools, you'd come in and like for 45 minutes, you just stand in standing tree meditation. And by the way, some schools a lot longer than that. But, but anything of movement was cheating in those schools. It was like, no, we only do stillness. But for those of us who are getting used to standing postures, they're very difficult and they take a lot of time and uh, too much static without movement with blood in the legs like this, I personally have found uh, can cause problems, including in the veins in your legs. So we go from marching, we go to our standing tree meditation, we're going to take our tailbone and imagine just plugging that down into the ground. From this position, I'm going to teach you an exercise that is a medical Qigong exercise as well. I'm going to take you back to middle fingers together. You're going to place these at the lower rim of the belly button, okay? And this is going to be a very brief run through because there's a lot of technicals uh, with this um, particular exercise. A lot more I could tell you about and we could spend a whole program on it all weekend. So. Um, but I'm going to just give you some beginning details so you can begin practicing it if you desire. Now, somebody asked me, I was just teaching a seminar in Raleigh last weekend. One of the questions that was asked uh, of me when I started to explain to people what Jing was. Jing, okay, J-I-N-G, the Chinese word Jing, means essence, okay? And a lot of us hear about uh, Qi, which means energy. But when you get into oriental medicine and so on, and I'm not going to get too technical, but I'll just get a little tiny bit technical. You can't have chi and you can't have energy unless you have jing. When your jing, when your essence is running out, this is how it's taught, when your essence is running out, you cannot have chi, you cannot have energy, and chi and energy in traditional Chinese medicine are connected to the organs and in particular to the organs all related to metabolism. So we need Jing to run the whole system. So when a person is running out of Jing, they just, it's like it's a joke to even say energy because they just don't even have it. So somebody asked, how do I regain some Jing? 
This is one of the number one practices that I would give you. You place the two middle fingers at the lower rim of the belly button, hold them together. The rest of your hands are just lightly pressed against your body there. Your feet flat on the ground. If you did this outside near a big evergreen tree near some water, you would get a lot more juice than we might get here in the hotel. Uh, but regardless of where you are, this is an excellent practice. Now, to begin with, you're just standing here. Initially, those of you who are not used to this, I want you to just go like that and come out and start to walk. Those that are getting more used to it or you're a little, either your energy is a little stronger, your body's a little stronger, or you've been practicing Qigong longer, just stay like this. So if I break off and start marching, you don't need to march, well then don't march. Because as you get better at this practice, if you started with being able to do it for one minute, you might be able to build up to three minutes. If you started with three minutes, you might be able to build up to five. If you started with five, you might be able to build up to 10. This is a great place to start. You're probably not going to notice a whole lot of jing in one session, one time, 10 minutes, one time, five minutes. But you will notice it if you do it 10 times in the course of a month. So if you do this 10 times in the course of a month, even if you did it only five minutes at a time, you will notice something if you're paying attention. You'll notice something's happening. Then all of a sudden, oh, I have, I have more energy. I have more energy. Mm. Inhale, exhale through the nose. Because this is a still practice, we don't really need to be exhaling through the mouth. You can, a little bit here and there, but you actually can breathe in and out through the nose just fine. If at any point though you feel a little ungrounded, but you wanna stay standing and you're like, I'd like to stay standing, try and stay with this, you can actually exhale through the mouth because exhaling through the mouth will help you to get more further grounded. Inhale, exhale. Again, if you exhale through the mouth, provides a little grounding. Can help you stay with it a little bit longer. Inhale, exhale, and go ahead and march those legs, all right? And uh, I'm gonna invite you guys, if you would, to have a seat over there. And for a moment, Keith, you're gonna come over here. And then Julie, if you'd like to participate in this, I'm gonna have you come in a couple minutes and do the same thing. So I uh, wanna give you guys just a little go right to standing tree meditation. Just wanna give you guys a feel for this. I think one of the things that I do when I teach people Qigong, all of what I do, all of the books that I write, all of the side books that I write for the certification program and like different trainings that we do, CEU courses, everything, I, I'm doing my best to give you guys a lay of the land so that you don't just practice a practice because honestly most of this without, I find that people in the West and so on, without information about these practices, why, how long should I do this? That you, you look up standing Wuji posture and if somebody doesn't tell you how long you should do it, then you don't really have a reference. If they say to you you should do it for 10 minutes but they don't give you any reference about what's gonna happen or what you're trying to do, well then what cause do you have to keep practicing it anyway? So I do my best to give you a lay of the land and as time goes on there's much more information but let's start you with uh, what we started with and just give you a couple examples and this also leads us into a little bit of uh, medical Qigong more, a little more deeply. So we have kidney one on the bottom of the feet. Uh, he's starting to gather energy from his feet down here. He is in this posture here, which starts to open up and uh, create like an energy field um, here. Uh, his mind is holding a particular posture. When the Buddha sat, you see you have little Buddha statues, some of you do, and the Buddha's sitting there in meditation. Where is the Buddha holding his hands? Oftentimes it's being held down here below the navel center, and it's uh, this is the area called Lower Dantian. Lower Dantian, or in martial arts we call this, in Japanese we call this area the Hara, okay? It's H-A-R-A, -A, but the R is pronounced like a D. This area here is your first battery. 
That's the part I want you to catch on to. It's your first battery, okay? Now, I'm holding my finger to his battery. I'm giving you a little demonstration of medical Qigong. You may not be able to hear that, but he just took a nice deep breath. And when he started to exhale, there's a very interesting thing that starts to happen in your Qigong practice where the breath starts becoming thick. It feels warmer. There's a heat to it. That's when you're getting the charge. So when I was talking about that bioelectric field and so on, if you practice a little bit more, you start getting that charge, you start getting that heat, and you start getting uh, that warmth in your breath. And guess what? That is like a fine wine or a fine medicine, however you want to think about that. Now you may notice over here his right arm is twitching a little, his left arm's twitching a little. I've got him plugged in over here. This is like plugging him in on the, he's already plugged in, and then I'm plugging in as well and providing energy. And he's starting to shake up and through here, and just by showing you this, I'm not just showing you this, this is actually a treatment. I'm, when I do this to his solar plexus, it's bringing attention to his solar plexus. And so in a Qigong practice, you see his breath, his breath comes up in here, and then he has a different uh, type of breath here. So, and he's getting a little more shaky and so on. I told you earlier, gathering chi is very important, but also staying grounded is very important. So here sometimes I will lightly, gently step on the foot, and I'll place my mind here to create some further grounding, okay? And this is a little example of uh, how a teacher or a practitioner can bring some energy to the body, and you can literally see it moving through the body. When this happens, this irrigates the meridians and so on, and uh, in the beginning years, I could not do this. So this kind of demonstration just would not have happened. I didn't have the juice to do it. So, um, but as the juice started building up in my uh, first few years of practice, this is the kind of thing that started to happen. I didn't even get a chance to do, I was doing massage at the time, I didn't even get a chance to do massage. I just kind of got close to people, started doing things, and it started building up their chi. So the first area we need to charge is this lower dantian. That's our first battery, okay? Um, there's more and more information coming out these days about what the heart and the heart field and the fields coming off of the brain. So if you're familiar with like heart math, they talk about this a lot, this idea of brain and heart coherence. Well, this has been in Chinese medicine for a long time. This area here is called middle dantian. This area here is called upper dantian. We need to charge this lower battery first, and then we can begin working um, with this field as well, and we can begin working with the field of the brain. Go ahead and take three Deep breaths there, Keith. I told you earlier that um, it takes a little bit of time for him to catch up to himself. He's gonna exhale his breath to kind of get grounded. This is just something that happens along the way. We don't wanna rush this process for you or for anyone or for Keith or whoever. But it's just giving you a reference and it just helps you see a little bit what this is about. They've done some measurements in China. They do a lot of experiments with these kinds of things. And they found that Qigong masters um, run like 10 to 100 times and even 1,000 times when it comes to an elderly person, the level of voltage. They can literally measure the electrical voltage coming off of their hands. Uh, and uh, it's many, many times greater than the average person. That's Qigong. That's the essence of Qigong. There's a phenomena there, and uh, it's pretty cool. You may, you, may wanna, you may want some of that for yourself. So open and close your hands, and then you can go and step out of there for a moment and uh, step off to the side. Excellent. Julie, if you'd like to come up and help me with a little something, we'll see exactly what we do here. Um, let's have you, let's, at home, you're going to do this one with Julie. Julie, let's do the one, uh, it's like hugging the tree. So she's going to bring her hands to uh, this position as if like she's hugging a tree, okay? This particular posture, and if you desire, please do it at home with her, okay? So this particular posture is uh, traditionally called standing like a post. 
It is one of the most difficult Qigong practices that I did in the beginning, especially when I had this spinal disease and pain in my body and everything. Right away, I couldn't hold my shoulders like this. I had to constantly keep letting my arms come down. If that's you at home, I would have you practice with your hands down here in the vicinity of lower Dantian rather than this middle Dantian. So you pick which position you want to work with. This is the traditional positioning of standing like a post, okay? And the idea is, is letting the tissues relax and holding the frame here, uh, slightly bent knees, um, the, the butt is not sticking out, the tailbone is like plugged down into the ground. Energy is now able to start coming up through the feet. You can imagine literally like a vortex of energy uh, whirling here. The fingertips, you're imagining plugging them in together. And if your arms get too shaky and too unstable, you can also take your middle fingers and just touch them together, which can help stabilize uh, that phenomena that's going on there. As this starts happening, energy starts coming up through the feet, it comes up into the knees, and it starts to fill and pool in this area of lower Dantian. From there, we can get some more juice going on. In some of our practices and medical Qigong programs, people will come and uh, we sort of like help each other. So it's like a glorified version of um, the monkeys at the end of the day where they literally pick out the bugs out of each other's hair and take care of those bugs for people. Um, we, we help bring energy to people. This can be very beneficial when you have, for example, an elderly person, let's say, who can't stand like this. You can actually do medical Qigong for them and help them uh, without them having to be uh, in this particular posture. You could literally just rub your hands and send some energy into their field. But as an example of that one last little mini example here, um, if I am standing here, let's just see and we'll see what you're able to see, but I'm just going to point here with my uh, index finger. I'm pointing to uh, Julie's sacrum there, which is the area where um, we have a concentrated chi at the base of the spine called Kundalini. Hmm. And so I can already feel that creating different space and so on in the energy. And you see her getting that nice breath, starting to open up her lungs and her chest. So imagine if you had, whether it's just one person like myself or you had a room full of people starting to focus their chi on Julie while Julie's practicing this. And we have a few people in the room. Those of you who are in the room with me off camera, just point in Julie's direction. And those of you at home, just for fun, point in Julie's direction. Point at your own computer if you're interested and you want to try that. It's a very interesting phenomenon, Qigong, because it can reach across time and space and reach across the computer because mind is everywhere and qi is mind's medium. It is the medium of mind. So right now you're juicing up uh, Julie. Julie's actually juicing you up at home, uh, whether you realize it or not. She's bringing some energy your way. So here we're starting to get some activity there in the throat. I can feel and see her starting to kind of shake inside. In another program, you guys there can relax your hands. Julie, you can let your hands slowly come down, but stay there. Stay in standing tree meditation. Um, later in another program or something, we're, we're going to get into much more details about the saliva, much more details about what's going on in your throat, how Qigong is connected to your endocrine system, and uh, take away some of the woo-woo from, um, you know, it's wonderful that there's a mystery to Qigong, but it's also helpful, I think, for a lot of people to know there's a lot of science behind it, too. And uh, saliva is not just saliva, it carries hormones and peptides and different things that are literally communicating messages to your entire body, um, all the way down to your DNA, which is literally what makes a healthy cell or creates a sick one. I'm going to have you go ahead and take three deep breaths there, Julie. Inhale, exhale. And then when you're ready, you can slowly step off to the side there. Um, those of you at home can start rubbing your hands together. We're going to go into um, one last round of practice here. And Julie, you can step off to the side and practice here if you're ready to as well. And all of you can come up here and practice if you desire. So going right back to where we were, 
we have a nice little warm up here, and rubbing our hands together. Okay. Again, there's a lot I could say about this. I already gave you some feedback on what this is and what it's doing, so we'll stick with what I said. And um, just relaxed. It's a relaxed rubbing of hands. Okay. Sometimes there's some vigorous practice we do with rubbing hands, but this one is just very chill, very easy. And inhale, exhale. If you're on a plane, you're kind of stressed out, something's going on, by rubbing your hands together like this, you give your mind something to focus on. And this is a Qigong practice, but you could literally consider it a self-soothing technique. People will literally do it um, as a self-soothing technique. But then usually they look around and somebody's looking at them and they stop doing it. <laughs> but if you're a Qigong practitioner, you might do it a little longer because you're like, oh, I know what this is doing. This is feeling pretty good. And then kind of like you can kind of massage the hands. You're bringing your focus to those healing hands that you have. And you're bringing your attention there. And then we're going to go right into this gentle drum. Remember, we also have the other one. Um, I'm just going to, again, skip over that one for now. But I also showed you that earlier one we did as a warm-up, which is the shaking of the water. So you can incorporate that one later as a warm-up if you desire. But I want to stay on track with our time here and stay in the heart of what we're doing. The shaking of the hands and the rubbing of the hands are kind of just warm-up practices. And then this part of the practice is a little more concentrated. So. We'll give you a little bit of time to go through this with me one more time. So we're tapping. Inhale, exhale. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. <sighs> you may notice doing this practice that um, all the practices that we did here today, that you're starting to get this achiness or this stiffness across your lower back. That's very common in uh, Qigong practice. And the reason for that is wherever the uh, energy, wherever the chi is stuck, wherever the blood is stuck, that's where you're going to get that achiness. And for a lot of people, that begins across the lower back. And that also has to do with all those other fluids in your body, um, lymphatic fluids, again, the blood, uh, the chi itself, cranial sacral fluids. And um, uh, this is also very much related to the lower dantian and the kidneys. And so, we need to get through that stagnation. We need to move through it. And then after this program is over, I highly recommend drink plenty of water over the next couple of days, especially if you're not used to this, because this practice uh, causes like an internal massage. It kind of squeezes poisons out of your tissues, puts them in the blood, and then you want to get that out of your blood by drinking plenty of water. So inhale, exhale. And while you are um, going and getting that water later and drinking that water, be sure to uh, say some positive words over your water. If you're not familiar with Dr. Emoto's book, check it out. Uh, hidden messages in water. Check out what happens to water molecules all the way down to their molecular structure when you uh, say things over them, like words of loving and kindness versus um, words that might be a little more negative, might, might be a little more toxic. And then recognize and realize, and you might want to read my book on that subject if you're interested, Qigong for Beginners, Your Path to Greater Health and Vitality. Um, so I talk about the fact that your body is mostly water. Your brain is 70% water. Um, you know, there's a lot of water in your body. So we have to be mindful about what we say and how we say it, who we say it to, how often we say it. These are things that uh, I put a lot of attention on in my book. Whereas I save a lot of these physical practices for more of like the video content. It's easier to follow me rather than look at pictures of me trying to do this in my book. Inhale, exhale. If you've ever seen one of those, if you haven't seen one, they have these little 
Asian drums, typically you see it in Asia where they have these little drums and there's like fancy little artwork on them and stuff and there's uh, two strings and two balls and when you rotate the handle of it, these two balls go like this and they tap on the drum. And uh, if you don't swing it quite right, then the balls don't hit the drum. So it's kind of like this little, you know, slight little challenge task. Anyway, that's the uh, name of this exercise here. And our arms acting like the strings and the hands acting like the balls on the drum there. Inhale, exhale. And then let that unwind. Plug your tailbone into the ground by bending knees, tucking the tailbone slightly forward, plugging in. Arms come out to the side, open up the armpits. You want to have your chin parallel with the floor. You don't want to be practicing with your head pointed down, nor do you want to, your chin pointed up. You just want to be mostly parallel to the ground there. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, pull the energy up through your feet, up into your legs, up into your lower belly. Exhale your breath through the mouth, down through the legs, down and through the feet. Bring your hands up with the backs of your hands. Exhale through the mouth. Inhale, come up. Imagine water coming down, big column of water coming down, flushing out the toxins. <sighs> out with the bad, in with the good. This time, slight variation. We're going to bring our feet underneath the shoulders. You're going to take those middle fingers. You're going to place them right to the lower rim of the belly button. We'll do the march here at the end. So stay there. Inhale, exhale. Knees slightly bent. I recommend as a beginner, you practice with your eyes open. When you get better at this, consider yourself getting better with it and you feel like you have greater balance and so on, then practice with your eyes closed. It may take a little bit of time for you. When you close your eyes and if you close your eyes, if you can see the subtlety that I share with you, a lot of times people close their eyes and they roll their head up like this. So be very leery of doing that. Uh, when I'm standing here and I start to close my eyes, I don't want to be like with my attention. I don't want to just be even with my eyes. I want my attention to go down to where my hands are. So whether I, my eyes are open or closed, I'm going to do it with my eyes closed here for a moment. Um, but whether your eyes are open or closed, I'm going to take my attention from this area called third eye, frontal lobe of my brain, forehead. I'm going to move that attention down to where my hands are. Some of you may notice that this, is, this practice this is heating you up quite a bit. The lower Dantian, my daughter, very intuitive when she was younger. She's about four years old, and uh, I said something about the lower Dantian here being called the Hara in Japanese martial arts. And without her knowing any information about it in terms of me teaching her or something, she said, Daddy, why don't you just call it the Hot? And that was very intuitive because the lower Dantian will heat up and cause steam in the body. So now take your attention from lower Dantian and hands and move that attention all the way down to your feet. 
If you've ever seen pictures of the Buddha and the belly area is open and there's a fire burning in there, the lower Dantian is referred to as a cauldron. And in Taoist practice and Buddhist practice and some others, Taoist uh, practice in particular, where they talk about turning the, and alchemical practices, they talk about turning the lead, the heavy emotions, the stress, the past, the fear, the anxiety, the depression, set it all on fire right here in this lower belly, recharge this lower belly, which is also referred to modern day science as the second brain, charge this second brain, recharge this second brain, heat this up, create some heat, some fire, some steam, some energy. Inhale, exhale, and then just march, pound to the ground there a little bit. Bring your hands to the sides, tapping low back, buttocks area, etc. Stay right there if it's comfortable to do so. Bend over slightly so you can get a little better angle there and reach. Come down the outsides of your legs. Come up the insides, back down. Whatever speed is comfortable for you. This is called tapping or Tao in. Tapping acupuncture meridians, etc. Depending on how dense and thick your body is or how thin and bony your body is, you want to be careful. And if you have a bit of a thicker body and your muscles are a little more dense, you can tap them harder. If you're thinner and every time you tap your muscles you feel bone, well then be careful because you'll hurt yourself. So just find that uh, the best you know, depth and uh, intensity of tapping that works for you. And then if there's a place down there, like my inner, my inner legs here, which is where a kidney meridian is, for example, that's a little tender, that's a little sore. So I'm gonna go right down there. I stay there for a moment, I tap that. I'm gonna come here to the outside uh, of the knees, just down below on the shins on the outside. We have an important acupuncture point there, stomach 36. It's called three mile point. You tap that area, you can go three miles more. That's the idea. Now, when you stand up, see how my head's forward? Bring it back to your trunk and then stand up. That avoids any kind of head rush and then go back to uh, marching there. Step out to standing tree meditation. Feet a little wider than shoulder width on this one. And then hold yourself very still for a moment. This is now, especially if you participated uh, from the very beginning of this event up till now, this becomes the most potent meditation that we've done so far. And you have the opportunity to tap into the effect, the impact of what is occurring because of all the practices that we did up to this point. This is very different than if we just walked in here and I said, okay, everybody, let's start standing tree meditation. You now have blood moving you now have energy moving. Your meridians are more open. Your mind is clearer because the energy is moving, it's flowing, as opposed to getting stuck in the spleen and you're stuck in worry or stuck in the root chakra and you're stuck in fear or stuck in the liver and you're angry. If the energy is flowing more freely, you already have greater access to meditation. So make sure the knees are slightly bent, tailbones tucked forward slightly, plugging that tailbone, imagining down into the ground, staying very still in your body. Take your tongue, place it at the roof of your mouth, just behind your two front teeth, and let's just be quiet and stand like this for a minute or two. Again, if you're a beginner, keep your eyes open. And if you're going to close your eyes, mind has to go down to Lord Antien, mind has to go down to the feet. Otherwise, this becomes a little bit dangerous.
imagine some energy coming up from the base of your spine or if you're familiar with where the perineum is. Imagining energy coming up your spine, coming over the top of your head, flowing down through the middle of your head, kind of zigzagging a little bit, going down into the tip of your tongue, which is touching there behind the two front teeth, traveling down through the tongue, coming down through the center line of your body, going down through the crotch area below the navel center, and then coming back up. Inhale, imagine somebody in your life, this will be the end of your meditation practice and then we'll chat a little bit before we go. Imagine somebody in your life right now, today, somewhere, who could use some energy from this whole group. All of the people that are meeting now, all the people that will be watching this later, who are going to do this meditation right here with us right now. I want you to think of somebody that you love and somebody that needs energy, healing, help from you. I just want you to image that person while we're all holding this meditation and creating a lot of energy together. There's a law in physics related to how powerful it is when two or more gather together and they have a common wave pattern to their energy. It is extremely far reaching. Your heart field alone, the field that comes off of your heart, they say, can be measured to the moon. Your heart field can be measured to the moon. So who can you not reach right now in this meditation? Sending love, sending energy to that person. Now for a moment. Imagine the earth as one tiny little ball that you're observing from space. Be very careful in this next meditation that we're doing here, brief one, but very pow powerful, very potent. When I say what I'm about to say, please don't go to the I feel sorry for card. Stay in the love that you feel. Don't go into I feel bad for. Those are different things. So imagine you're a very big being, you're a very loving being, you feel love in your heart, and there's this tiny little earth over there. And you put it in the palm of your hand, and you say, I love you, little guy. I love you, little girl. I offer you love. I offer you light. I offer you joy. I bring you kindness. I bring you compassion. And above all, I offer you peace. I come in peace. I bring you peace. I offer you peace. And then go ahead and take three deep breaths. Slow, your speed, three breaths. On your exhale, exhale, exhale your breath just like we were doing earlier. We exhale a little extra to get grounded. And when ready, begin marching your legs and your feet. Reach down if touching your knees is comfortable. Great. 
If your shin's comfortable, great. Don't go past what's comfortable for you, but a little bit of a stretch, and in that stretch and in that hanging, be sure to breathe in and out through your nose or in and out through the nose and then the mouth. And just stretch there for a moment. <sighs> Some type of stretch that is comfortable for you. Basic toe touch here. Slowly come up. Go ahead and find yourself a sip of water and a seat as we have a little closing conversation. <clears throat> All right. We are talking about today and have been talking about healing, okay? Healing for me, after many years of being involved with it, it's a vast subject. Um, again, as I mentioned at the very beginning of the program, we have, and of course I could talk about this for days, right? So, but as I said at the beginning of the program, we have physical health, but we also have emotional health. We also have mental health. We also have spiritual health. What I love about Qigong practice and the reason that I choose it as the primary practice that I bring to you all, because I'm trained in many different things, many different forms of martial arts, uh, you know, psychology was a counselor and supervisor in a hospital, life coach, uh, life coaching for, you know, whatever it's been, 30 years, um, alongside of my counseling practice and so on, alongside of my medical Qigong practice. So I could hit healing, so to speak, with you from many different angles. But one of the shortcuts is this practice called Qigong. And uh, if you're interested in some of the mental side of things, the overview of things, which is not going to be just uh, the same thing you hear from every uh, Qigong master coming out of China, for example. It's going to be more like my life and my life and my lifestyle and what I did and my psychology background and my understanding of qi and my understanding of martial art and my understanding of focus and my understanding of psychology and my understanding of the psychology behind healing. If you're interested in any of that, you can check out this book, Qigong for Beginners, Your Path to Greater Health and Vitality. And in it, I make this uh, comment because that's my teaching. That's like a slice of my life. You could read that book. Believe me, I got many more books in me. I got a hundred books in me. Easy. Pass this book. But it gives you a slice of, if you want to know, hey, David, how did you heal yourself? Well, I show you on YouTube, do this practice, do that practice, do the other practice. But if you ever wonder, like, what is what is David's psychology? Well, read the book. That's my psychology. That's how I like live my life. And I believe there's a lot of, there's an interesting thing amongst uh, philosophies and philosophers. Um, and it particularly I'll emphasize like Asian philosophy philosophers and so on. There's this idea of like soft is the way. Everything's soft, soft, soft. So like Tai Chi, soft Tai Chi, that's the way. And when you go into a soft Tai Chi school as a karate practitioner, which I originally did, they immediately were like, hey, you don't belong here. They could tell right away. They're like, you know. And the teacher even said to me, in order for, you to, in order for me to teach you, you're going to have to empty your cup of tea before I'm even willing to teach you. So when I went to that school, I emptied my karate tea, the flavor of karate, I emptied it. And I went in and I practiced Tai Chi. And then uh, I would go, for example, to my Aikido teacher's school. That philosophy fit well with like Tai Chi. But again, I had to let go of the karate tea. Anyway, so, but there's this philosophy amongst all of these different arts. I'll shortcut it for you on the level that I will because I've studied it and practiced it for many years and I'll try and give you a punchline with it. To me, hard style is not the way, nor is soft style. Both of them can be a way. Hard style, even in the form of, even in practices of Qigong, some would consider gentle drum. It doesn't look like karate, right? But some would consider that more toward external practice because there's so much movement. And then you come back to an internal practice. 
This is a flavor I very much like, and if you watch any of my routines, any of my programs, any of my practices, I give it to you because this combination of physical movement back to stillness, more physical movement, more physical movement, purging back to stillness, this combination over years of practice, it's going to catapult you to some very profound internal um, and external states. So, uh, and again, but for those of you interested in the mental, I just wanted to show you my book, tell you about it, whatever. Um, so, on the planet right now, lots of tension, right? I mean, it's, it's really wild. If you're going to watch the news, I highly recommend pick one of those postures that we did, did earlier and practice doing your standing tree meditation while you're watching the news and then right away go practice your purging practices to clear stuff out. Um, how many times have you heard a story from somebody and they say, hey, this is what so-and-so said, right? And the further it gets away from the source, the more distorted the story gets, right? So the news is like that on the level that it is. Everything's like that on the level that it is. So take it all with a grain of salt. And as I've been saying for some years now, especially as the planet has been heating up with so many different things going on, including the tension that's happening right now, I've said, be the change you want to see in the world. That was something Gandhi said. I subscribe to it. I'm here with you today. I'll be here with you tomorrow if you desire. And uh, I'm practicing. I'm bringing the practice. Uh, I'm not perfect. I haven't arrived. I'm not uh, the best master in the world, but uh, I'm a practitioner. I'm always practicing. We have a great community of people who join and practice, who are interested in the practice. And if I asked any one of them who has come more than one time and who's interested in the practice, and I said to them, are you interested in world peace? It would be a no-brainer. It'd be like a, almost like a ridiculous question, right? Because they're practicing personal peace and then they're interested in world peace. There are many people who are interested in world peace. They do not practice personal peace. They do not take personal peace seriously enough to make sure they bring it home. They do not take personal peace seriously enough to do it long enough to achieve healing because all forms of healing come from more peaceful states of being. But as I told you in the beginning, they're habits. You know, I don't want to lie to you. I don't want to tell you, you can do all of this in one day and then buy my program for this amount of money. I'm not here to sell that to you. I'm here to be honest with you and tell you we have a myriad of ways in which you can engage and practice with us for free, like I said, pay for CEUs and get certified in the teaching. There's all these different levels. I'm not attached to where you join in. I am attached. I hope you do join me. I hope you do join the community. And you start practicing with somebody else, five other people, 10 other people, because they've done studies on this group of monks. There's many things, but I'll give you one example. They've done this study with a group of monks. These monks travel around. They do their meditation in these different cities. They've been following them for like 20 years. Every time they show up, it's like, I can't remember how many people. It's like eight or five or something, whatever. They literally go in, they do their meditation every single time. Crime rate goes down in the city. Like they have all these numbers that they document about what's happening in the city. So when we're joining around the world, there's a a lot of field therapies and more people, not field therapies, that's what medical Qigong is, energy field therapy, but there's um, field science where people are understanding that we're all made up of energy fields and that beetles, beetles on this side of the globe are connected to beetles on this side of the globe. Monkeys on this side of the globe are connected to monkeys on this side of the globe. We as humans, we're connected on this side of the globe to that side of the globe. So what can we do? Every once in a while, slow down. Every once in a while, practice some of this. Because if we want greater peace on the planet, we have to start with ourselves. And we have to have practices. And we have to make it a habit. Eno enough. I'm just going to say this. I don't mean it for you or I'm like bossing you around. I'm just going to say into the ethers. Enough of the idea of a quick fix. You're going to do this and for only $29.95, you're going to be able to da 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 enough of this and we don't even watch it. We don't even go back. We need new habits. And if your habit is peace, you're going to pay it forward to other people. Trust me, I was not a peaceful teenager. I'm paying it forward to you guys because I got peaceful within myself and so therefore I can bring it to you. I want to thank you so much for joining me today and those of you who came in person. 
um, here locally. We're hanging out. And uh, I want to thank the Love, Peace, Amen Foundation for making this possible and some of our other events um, that uh, we just did one here live in Wilmington a whole Saturday. So if you haven't seen that one, it's completely up on YouTube. It's entirely free. You might glean some wisdom from that. Uh, I would also um, key you in if you're somebody new and you're like, man, where do I start and how do I have a routine and how do I, I hinted to earlier, we have a, this 21 day Qigong challenge. It's literally like you can do it in as many days as you want, but they say that it takes 21 days in psychology, many studies on this. It takes at least 21 days to create a new habit. That means you have to do it every day for 21 days and only then, for the most part and for most people, do you have the chance that this is going to become a habit for you. Okay? Even a chance, does it's not 100%, but it gives you a chance. 21 days. So we have this 21 day routine, just 10 minutes a day, and then in 21 days, you at least have the chance. Okay? So I want you to know about that. I also want you to know, those of you that are local to Wilmington, classes are starting up again live um, since the pandemic. It's the first time we started doing, oh, we've been doing seminars, but we're going to be doing regular weekly classes. And those of you who are watching online, uh, pay attention uh, if you desire, get on the email list or whatever the case may be, because starting uh, next year, I'm going to reinstitute what we were doing during the pandemic, which is once a week Qigong class online. The subject of that matter is Qigong for guess what? Does anybody have any ideas? Peace. Peace. Because we need it. Thanks, everybody. See you next time.